Jack Montgomery's senses were assaulted the moment he emerged from the disorienting portal. The world around him was alive with vibrant colours, sounds and smells, all more intense than anything he had ever experienced. He found himself in the middle of a dense, lush forest, the sunlight filtering through the canopy above, casting dappled shadows on the forest floor. He staggered forward, trying to steady himself. The ground beneath his feet was soft with moss, and the air was filled with the earthy scent of pine and fresh rain. Birds chirped melodiously, and somewhere in the distance, a stream gurgled. This was Arcanum, a world he had meticulously designed and brought to life on his computer screen. Now, he was standing in it, feeling its reality in a way that was both exhilarating and terrifying. Jack took a deep breath, trying to calm his racing heart. He looked down at himself and saw that he was still dressed in the armour he had worn during the goblin attack. The weight of the sword at his side and the feel of the metal against his skin grounded him, reminding him that this was no dream. He had truly crossed into the world of Arcanum. Suddenly, the tranquility of the forest was shattered by the sounds of battle. Shouts and the clash of steel echoed through the trees. Jack's pulse quickened. Instinctively, he moved toward the noise, his hand gripping the hilt of his sword. As he approached a clearing, he saw a small village under siege. Goblins, vicious and snarling, swarmed through the streets, setting fire to huts and attacking the villagers. Amidst the chaos, a lone figure fought valiantly, her sword flashing in the sunlight. It was Elsie, the warrior who had saved him the night before. She moved with deadly grace, cutting down goblins left and right, but the sheer number of enemies was overwhelming. Jack knew he had to help. Drawing his sword, Jack charged into the fray. His movements, though still unfamiliar, were guided by the countless hours he had spent designing the combat mechanics of his game. He swung his blade with precision, cutting down goblins and making his way to Elsie's side. Jack! Elsie exclaimed, a mixture of relief and surprise in her eyes. I thought you were just a figment of my imagination. Believe me, I wish I was, Jack replied, parrying a goblin's attack. What's happening here? The goblins attacked at dawn, Elsie explained between strikes. We've been holding them off, but they're relentless. Together, they fought their way through the village, rallying the villagers and driving back the goblins. The tide of battle began to turn as Jack and Elsie's combined efforts inspired the villagers to fight back with renewed vigour. After what felt like hours, the last of the goblins were either dead or fleeing into the forest. Panting and covered in sweat, Jack looked around at the smouldering remains of the village. The villagers were tending to the wounded and extinguishing the fires. Despite the devastation, there was a sense of victory and resilience in the air. Elsie sheathed her sword and turned to Jack, her expression serious. Thank you for your help. I don't know how you got here, but we could use someone with your skills. Jack nodded, still trying to process everything. I need to understand what's happening. This world, it's exactly like the game I designed, and now I'm here, living in it. Elsie's eyes softened with sympathy. We can talk more at the refuge. It's not safe here. She motioned for him to follow, leading him through the forest to a hidden path. They walked in silence, the weight of their shared experiences hanging between them. Jack took in his surroundings, marvelling at the beauty and detail of the world he had created. The forest was teeming with life. Birds flitted between the trees, and small creatures scurried through the underbrush. Every detail was exactly as he had envisioned it, down to the smallest leaf and the faintest sound. After a while, they arrived at a secluded clearing where a group of rebels had set up camp. Thomas, the wise mage Jack had seen in the village, was there, along with a handful of other characters Jack recognised from his game. They looked up as Elsie and Jack approached, their expressions wary but curious. Everyone, this is Jack, Elsie announced. He's from another world, and he's here to help. The rebels exchanged glances, and Thomas stepped forward. Welcome, Jack. We've heard much about you. Jack raised an eyebrow. Heard about me? How is that possible? Thomas smiled enigmatically. All in good time. For now, let's get you settled and explain what's happening. As they sat around the campfire, the rebels shared their stories and the challenges they faced. Jack listened intently, realizing that his arrival in Arcanum was no coincidence. 
There was a prophecy, they explained, one that spoke of a hero from another world who would come to save Arcanum from a great evil. Malachar, a dark sorcerer and the primary antagonist in Jack's game, was real, and his plans to merge Arcanum with the real world threatened both realms. Jack felt a heavy weight settle on his shoulders. The responsibility was immense, and the line between creator and participant blurred. He had designed this world, but now he had to live in it, to fight for it. And somehow, he had to find a way to stop Malachar and save both worlds. As the fire crackled and the night deepened, Jack realized that his journey had only just begun. He was no longer a disillusioned game designer. He was a part of Arcanum, and its fate was intertwined with his own. The hidden refuge buzzed with a sense of urgency and anticipation. Jack sat by the campfire, surrounded by the rebels he had once only known as lines of code and pixels on a screen. Elsie and Thomas, the central figures in his creation, now breathed and moved beside him, their presence both comforting and unsettling. The reality of his situation was sinking in, and with it came the crushing weight of responsibility. Elsie handed Jack a bowl of stew, her eyes soft with concern. You should eat, she said. You'll need your strength for what's ahead. Jack took the bowl gratefully, though his appetite was minimal. The aroma of the stew was rich and savoury, a testament to the culinary detail he had programmed into the game. He took a tentative bite, savouring the flavours that felt both familiar and surreal. As he ate, he listened to the conversations around him, absorbing the gravity of their mission. Thomas, the wise mage, sat across from Jack, his expression thoughtful. Jack, he began, I know this must be overwhelming for you, but you need to understand the significance of your presence here. You're not just a visitor, you're a pivotal part of our world's survival. Jack set down his bowl, his brow furrowing. I still don't get it, he said, frustration edging his voice. How is any of this possible? How am I here, in a game I created? Thomas leaned forward, his eyes gleaming with an almost mystical light. Our worlds are more connected than you realize, he explained. Your artifact, it's a conduit, a bridge between realms. It's infused with ancient magic, the same magic that flows through Arcanum. When the storm struck, the artifact activated, pulling you into our world. Jack's mind raced, piecing together the fragments of his experience. The artifact, the lightning, the portal, it all made a twisted kind of sense. So, the artifact is the key, he muttered. But why me? Why now? Elsie exchanged a glance with Thomas before speaking. There's a prophecy, she said. It speaks of a hero from another world, one who would come to aid Arcanum in its darkest hour. That hero is you, Jack. The weight of her words hung in the air, heavy and undeniable. Jack stared into the fire, his thoughts a tumultuous storm. He had always dreamed of being a hero, of creating, G.I. a world where he could make a difference. But this, this was beyond anything he had ever imagined. What exactly does the prophecy say? Jack asked, his voice barely above a whisper. Thomas reached into his robe and pulled out a scroll, its edges worn and yellowed with age. He unrolled it carefully, revealing ancient runes and symbols. The prophecy is written in the old tongue, he said, his finger tracing the lines of text. It speaks of a realm in peril, a dark force rising to consume both worlds, and it tells of a creator, a shaper of worlds, who would come to unite the forces of light and lead us to victory. Jack felt a chill run down his spine. A creator, he repeated, that's me. Thomas nodded. You have the knowledge and the power to help us, Jack. You designed this world, its people, its history, but now you must live it. You must fight for it. Jack looked around at the faces of the rebels, each one a testament to his creativity, each one now a living, breathing person relying on him. He felt a surge of guilt, realizing that his creations had been struggling long before he arrived, their lives shaped by his decisions and designs. I never meant for any of this to happen, Jack said, his voice filled with remorse. I just wanted to create a game, an escape. I never thought it would become real. Elsie placed a reassuring hand on his shoulder. We know, she said gently. But you're here now, and we believe in you. Together, we can stop Malachar and save both our worlds. Jack nodded, the weight of his responsibility settling on his shoulders like a mantle. What's our next move? he asked, determination hardening in his voice. Thomas rolled up the scroll and tucked it away. We need to locate the heart of the realm, he said. 
It's an ancient artifact of immense power, capable of stabilizing the portals and thwarting Malakar's plans. But its location is hidden, protected by powerful enchantments. Jack took a deep breath, feeling a renewed sense of purpose. Then we find the heart of the realm, he said, and we stop Malakar once and for all. The rebels nodded, their resolve mirrored in Jack's eyes. The path ahead was fraught with danger and uncertainty, but for the first time, Jack felt a glimmer of hope. He had created this world, and now he would fight to protect it. The journey was only beginning, but he was ready to face whatever challenges lay ahead, united with his creations in a battle for the fate of both their worlds. The dawn light cast a soft glow over the refuge, illuminating the camp with a sense of calm before the storm. Jack, Elsie, and Thomas gathered around the fire, their expressions grave as they prepared to delve deeper into the mystery of the prophecy. Thomas unfurled the ancient scroll once more, the parchment crackling as it revealed the cryptic runes and symbols that detailed Arcanum's fate. Jack leaned in, his curiosity piqued despite the heavy burden of responsibility he felt. The prophecy is written in the old tongue, Thomas began, his voice resonating with authority and wisdom. It speaks of a time when darkness will rise, threatening to engulf both our world and yours. This darkness is embodied by Malachar, a sorcerer who seeks to merge Arcanum with your world, drawing power from both to achieve ultimate domination. Jack listened intently, the pieces of the puzzle starting to fit together. Malachar was not just a fictional villain. He was a real, tangible threat, and Jack's presence in Arcanum was no mere coincidence. The prophecy also mentions a shaper of worlds, Thomas continued, his gaze fixed on Jack. A creator who bridges the gap between realms, bringing with him the knowledge and power to unite the forces of light and defeat the darkness. Jack felt a shiver run down his spine. And you believe that I'm this shaper of worlds? He asked, his voice tinged with disbelief. Elsie nodded. You created Arcanum, Jay. Ack. You understand its intricacies, its strengths, and weaknesses. The prophecy foretold your arrival, and we believe you are the key to saving both our worlds. Thomas pointed to a particular section of the scroll, where an intricate illustration depicted a glowing heart surrounded by radiant light. This is the heart of the realm, he explained. It is said to be the source of all magic in Arcanum, capable of stabilizing the portals and restoring balance. But its location is hidden, protected by powerful enchantments. Jack studied the illustration, feeling a strange connection to the artifact. How do we find it? he asked, determination hardening his resolve. Thomas looked thoughtful. The heart of the realm can only be revealed through a series of trials, each designed to test the worthiness of those who seek it. The trials are scattered across Arcanum, hidden in places of great significance and danger. Elsie placed a reassuring hand on Jack's shoulder. We will face these trials together, she said. You are not alone in this, Jack. We stand with you. Jack nodded, grateful for the support of his newfound allies. What do we know about these trials? he asked, eager to formulate a plan. Thomas consulted another ancient text, this one filled with maps and notes. The first trial is believed to be located in the ruins of Eldara, he said, tracing a path on the map. It is a place steeped in history and magic, once the center of Arcanum's greatest civilization, before it fell to Malachar's corruption. Jack recognized the name immediately. The ruins of Eldara were one of the most detailed and treacherous locations he had designed. I remember, he said. The ruins are filled with traps, puzzles, and ancient guardians. It won't be easy to navigate. Elsie's eyes sparkled with determination. Then we will need to be prepared, she said. We should gather supplies, study the maps, and plan our approach carefully. Thomas nodded in agreement. Time is of the essence, he said. Malakar's forces are growing stronger, and the stability of both our worlds depends on us finding the heart of the realm. Jack felt a sense of urgency and purpose settle over him. He had always dreamed of creating a game that would captivate and challenge players, but now he was living that dream in a way he had never imagined. The stakes were higher than ever, and the line between creator and participant had blurred beyond recognition. As the sun climbed higher in the sky, Casting long shadows over the camp, Jack and his companions set to work. They gathered supplies, studied the maps, and prepared for the journey ahead. 
The path to the ruins of Eldara would be perilous, but they were ready to face whatever challenges awaited them. With each passing moment, Jack's resolve grew stronger. He was no longer just a disillusioned game designer. He was a hero in a world he had created, fighting to save both Arcanum and his own reality. The prophecy had foretold his arrival, and now it was up to him to fulfill it. As the preparations continued, Jack couldn't help but feel a sense of awe and wonder at the journey he had embarked upon. He had always believed in the power of storytelling, in the ability of games to transport players to other worlds. Now, he was living proof of that belief, and he was determined to see it through to the end. The road ahead was long and fraught with danger, but Jack was ready. With Elsie, Thomas, and the rebels by his side, he would face the trials, find the heart of the realm, and stop Malachar's dark plans. The fate of two worlds rested on his shoulders, and he would not let them down. The path to the ruins of Eldara was long and treacherous, winding through dense forests, across rocky terrain, and into the heart of Arcanum's most ancient and mysterious lands. Jack, Elsie, Thomas, and a small group of rebels made their way carefully, every step bringing them closer to their destiny, nation, and deeper into danger. The forest around them was alive with the sounds of nature, but there was an underlying tension in the air. Jack could feel it, a sense of foreboding that made every rustle of leaves and snap of a twig seem like a potential threat. The group moved in near silence, their senses heightened, and their weapons at the ready. As they approached a narrow gorge, Thomas raised a hand, signaling the group to halt. He stepped forward, his eyes scanning the terrain. This is a known ambush point, he whispered. Stay alert. Jack tightened his grip on his sword, his eyes darting around the shadows that clung to the rocky walls of the gorge. He had designed this area with ambushes in mind, intending to challenge players with sudden, unexpected dangers. Now, he was about to experience one of his own creations firsthand. Without warning, a group of Malachar's minions, twisted, dark creatures known as Shadow Stalkers, leaped from the shadows. Their eyes glowed with a malevolent light, and their movements were quick and fluid. The rebels sprang into action, weapons clashing against the Shadow Stalkers' claws and fangs. Jack found himself in the thick of the battle, his sword meeting the onslaught of a Shadow Stalker's attack. The creature was fast, its movements a blur as it struck with deadly precision. Jack's reflexes, honed by countless hours of game design and playtesting, kicked in. He parried and countered, his blade cutting through the Shadow Stalker's defenses. Beside him, Elsie fought with ferocity and grace, her sword a blur of motion as she dispatched her foes. Thomas stood a short distance away, casting spells that sent bolts of energy crackling through the air, striking down Shadow Stalkers with pinpoint accuracy. The rebels fought valiantly, their teamwork and determination turning the tide of the battle. After what felt like an eternity, the last of the Shadow Stalkers fell, dissolving into shadows and mist. The group paused to catch their breath, the adrenaline of the fight still coursing through their veins. Jack wiped the sweat from his brow, his heart pounding. Is everyone okay? he asked, looking around at his companions. Elsie nodded, though her expression was grim. We're fine, but this was just the beginning. Malachar's forces will only get stronger the closer we get to the ruins. Thomas stepped forward, his eyes scanning the horizon. We need to keep moving, he said. The longer we stay in one place, the more vulnerable we are to another attack. The group pressed on, the landscape gradually changing from dense forest to rocky, barren terrain. The air grew colder, and a sense of ancient power seemed to emanate from the ground beneath their feet. Jack could feel the presence of the ruins growing stronger, a reminder of the trials that awaited them. As they climbed a steep hill, the ruins finally came into view. Eldara was a sprawling complex of ancient stone structures, half buried in the earth and covered in moss and vines. The architecture was both majestic and foreboding, a testament to a civilization that had once thrived and then fallen into decay. Thomas gestured to a large, crumbling archway that marked the entrance to the ruins. The first trial lies within, he said. We must be prepared for anything. The group approached the archway cautiously, their footsteps echoing in the silence. As they stepped through, Jack felt a sudden shift in the air, a tingling sensation that made his skin prickle. He recognized the feeling, 
It was the same sense of magic and mystery he had programmed into the game, now come to life. The interior of the ruins was a labyrinth of corridors and chambers, filled with traps and puzzles, designed to test the mettle of any who dared to enter. Jack took the lead, his knowledge of the layout and mechanisms guiding them safely through the treacherous passages. In one chamber, they encountered a series of pressure plates, M, bedded in the floor, each one marked with a different symbol. Jack recognized the puzzle immediately. It was one he had designed to challenge players' logic and memory. We need to step on the plates in the correct sequence, Jack explained. One wrong move, and the traps will activate. The group worked together, carefully deciphering the symbols and stepping on the plates in the right order. With each correct step, a soft glow illuminated the symbols, guiding them forward. Finally, they reached the other side, the way ahead opening with a low rumble. Their next challenge came in the form of a guardian, a massive stone golem that blocked their path. The creature's eyes glowed with a fiery light as it lumbered toward them, each step shaking the ground. Jack and Elsie moved in tandem, their attacks coordinated to exploit the golem's weaknesses. Thomas cast spells to weaken the creature's defenses, while the rebels provided support, their arrows and blades striking with precision. The battle was fierce, but their combined efforts eventually brought the golem crashing to the ground, its stone form crumbling into rubble. As the dust settled, Jack felt a surge of triumph and camaraderie. They had faced their first challenges and emerged victorious, their bond as a team growing stronger with each trial. We did it, Jack said, his voice filled with a mix of relief and determination. But we can't let our guard down. The heart of the realm is still out there, and Malachar's forces won't stop until they've destroyed everything we've fought for. Elsie placed a hand on his shoulder, her eyes filled with fierce resolve. We'll face whatever comes next together. We're not just fighting for Arcanum, we're fighting for both our worlds. Jack nodded, his resolve solidifying. The challenges ahead would be daunting, but he was ready. With his friends and allies by his side, he would navigate the trials, find the heart of the realm, and stop Malachar's dark plans. As they continued deeper into the ruins, Jack couldn't help but feel a sense of anticipation and purpose. The journey was far from over, but he knew they were on the right path. Together, they would face the darkness and emerge victorious, their bond unbreakable and their mission clear.